I had an aunt, my father's sister, who was a very good, serious painter, showed her paintings. I loved my aunt Hannah, her name was. <laughs> um, and honestly, she didn't really get along that well with the rest of the family. My mother was particularly not very fond of her. And, and as a youngster, when I was naughty, which I wasn't so naughty, but if I was just being a little difficult, my mother always said, you're just like your Aunt Hannah. <laughs> and I was always so pleased to be like Aunt Hannah, who was a wonderful painter. I had a boyfriend, um, a childhood sweetheart who, who I was with for many years, and I was very close to his family. And they had a, well, not an advertising agency. He produced jingles for TV and radio. So, so there were always advertising people around. And that was my first real introduction to advertising, because I lived in a suburb in New Jersey. And um, I used to come into New York. Their office was in New York. And, and it was, to me, it was very glamorous to be around all these creative people who worked in New York City. And um, I had a lot of exposure to that world through, through them. So as I got older, that, that was a big influence on me. That's when I got over wanting to work for Walt Disney, I guess. <laughs> I took high school art classes, but I, I went to school, lived in Teaneck, New Jersey, and, and there was no real strong art curriculum there at all. Again, I found my own way. I was the art editor of the high school yearbook and probably the junior high school. I designed all the invitations to everything for school always. Again, I was always the kid that did that, did all the decorations for the junior prom. I'm still doing that kind of stuff in our neighborhood here. My brother was at Penn, and he was dating girls at Moore. And he said, there's this great school in Philadelphia. I think that you would love it. And because there was a Philadelphia connection, my brother had been at Penn, my father had gone to Penn. Um, so I went to see Moore, and I just loved it, and it, it was just perfect. So that's how I found out about Moore. And it was very exciting to me. And that's all I wanted to be. That's all I ever wanted to be was an art director in advertising. I didn't, I didn't know all the bits and pieces about it, but that's all I wanted to be. When I was at Moore in the 60s, and it's probably still true today, the faculty w they were all fabulous. Um, if I had to pick one, oh, can I give you two or three? <laughs> um, certainly freshman year, there were some very challenging and, and inspiring instructors. There was someone named George Sklar in three-dimensional design who was, who was just famous for being tough and, you know, difficult. And we all shed tears in George Sklar's class, but, it, but he was really quite fabulous in, in what he exposed us to and demanded from us. Um, then in my major, the head of the department was someone named Vincent Ferrelli, who was, who was just so terrific. They all, the, all those instructors worked in the field. So again, they were very exciting to us that they were art directors out in the world working. And he was so inspiring and, and just really prepared us so well. Jack Curl was someone else in typography um, who, who taught us a lot about the real world and what it was going to be like out there. They, they were all just terrific. I mean, it, they just could not have been better. Um, it was very hands-on, very, the classes were small, and um, they were just so inspiring and challenging and, and knowledgeable. And, it was 1967 by the time I came to New York. Um, advertising was in its creative heyday. Wells Rich Green with, with Mary Wells. Um, there were, it was, it was just the time for the creative people in advertising. And it was, it was wonderful. So women, women had a place. And I, my first job in New York was in package design, and we had a lot of cosmetic accounts. Because of that, I ended up in the cosmetic industry. And 
And certainly women were very well received in advertising, in creative spots, in the, cosme the world of cosmetics. So, so I never felt, maybe if I had been in an agency that you know dealt with cars or I don't know, different kinds of accounts, it would have been different. But, but I had a very easy time. In fact, I felt that being a woman in those days in my field was, was an advantage in a way. Well, I was at Estee Lauder the longest of my working years. In those days, an art director designed the ad, or in my case, it was an advertising and sales promotion. I did not work in the agency. I worked directly for the, for the Estee Lauder company. So my job was to design the ad, to, if it had an illustration in it, to hire the illustrator, if it was with a photograph, to hire the photographer, to hire the model, if there was a model, um, to go on those photo shoots. So everything from the layout, which we did with magic markers, to having the typeset, to complete into production, um, the, the actual production of the ad, the mechanicals, as they were called, that too, there were people who did that for me under my direction. So it was truly, you know, conceiving of the ad and, and producing it. I've been working on a carousel, a carousel, my carousel, for 22 years, I guess. Um, yeah, it was bought in 1984. We live in this area called Dumbo in Brooklyn, and in the early 80s, my husband was supposed to develop the waterfront over here. At that time, there was a master plan done by an architect named Benjamin Thompson, who did Faneuil Hall in Boston and many other festival marketplaces. And Ben Thompson, as part of the master plan, thought it would be great to have a carousel on the river here between the Brooklyn and Manhattan bridges. So I always loved carousels. And I guess Ben knew that and David knew that. So I was given the task of finding a carousel. And there was one being auctioned off in Youngstown, Ohio, at a park called Idora Park, and we, we got the carousel at auction. It's a 1922 carousel made by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company. Um, it was not my intention to restore it, but I interviewed people to restore it, and I realized that I was better qualified than most people who were in the business of carousel restoration at that time. So I started to restore it. Um, I spent a year doing research, and it was a very exciting project, really. It was a beautiful carousel. What I spent most of those 22 years doing was scraping it down to the original paint. And my hope was to be able to leave it in that original paint. But there were too many repairs that needed to be made on all the horses. So I documented everything that I found that was originally there. And then in the end, repainted everything to what was there. Um, it's finished. It looks spectacular. I'm very proud of it. It's a treasure. It's, um, it's all intact, and, and someday it'll ride here on the waterfront. Moore truly did change my life. I was from a small town in New Jersey. Um, I always wanted to live in a city. I got to Moore, and, and there I was in this big city, and, and um, it just, we were given so much responsibility so early. We were, we were exposed to so much so early because it was such a small school. There was a closeness with, with the girls and the faculty, and it was, it just couldn't have been better. It just truly opened my eyes up to so much. I also feel like Moore's in very capable, good hands right now. When Happy Fernandez became president, and I met her and saw what, what terrific things she was doing with the school, how she really got it on track, and it stayed on track, and it just kept getting better and better. I really felt that the school was, was stable, and, and if I was going to do something for them, it would be now. I guess when I agreed to join the board, 
And I guess going to school, going back to Moore, and seeing those students, and, and seeing how they're so committed like we were, and seeing those fresh young faces and all fired up, and it just really touches me. I just think it's fabulous. I guess there hasn't been anything else in my life other than my family that, that really feels so important to me.